Hi, I'm Rich. And I'm Kathy. And we are creating a simple life here in the Adirondacks. But simple doesn't mean easy. <laughs> and today we're going to talk to you about what it costs for us to build some of the dome. Not the whole house, we're nowhere near finished. Basically from the foundation to being dried in. Buried. Our budget was set at about $320,000 max. And then right when we were about to get started, uh, we ran into the COVID pandemic, <laughs> which made a mess of everything. Yeah, prices skyrocketed, inflation went crazy. We decided at that time to wait a year to build the house and build a garage instead because it was less expensive and we, we hoped that prices would come down in the next year. That didn't happen. Instead, the prices went even higher. But we decided to just forge ahead and do it anyway. We had gotten estimates from some contractors, and that was looking really out of our reach. So we decided to... Be our own general contractors. So that we definitely were able to make all the calls ourselves instead of paying somebody else to make the calls for us. We started building the house in the spring of 2022. And we are now in 2024, which is our third year of building. And the prices have not gotten any better. No. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today, like how far over budget we are. It'll be the reality of what it's cost us to get to this point. So the first big expense was ordering and getting the blue engineered stamped blueprints, blueprints. done. So once those blueprints came in, we were able to also take them down and get permit approval. We had to make a couple of changes, a couple extra expenses in there, but we were finally able to do it. And the total cost for the blueprints and the permits was $4,276. Formworks kit includes the uh, structural system, which is the foundation anchor plates, uh, the main structural steel beams, all the nuts and bolts for the steel frame, reinforcing steel rebar for the shell, and the forming system, which includes the sheets of foam insulation. And then it also included the waterproofing system, which has this HDPE clay membrane, the cold joint water stop, the seam tape, the termination bar, the water wicking membrane. And lastly, the ventilation system, which is the ERV unit and four controls for that unit. And on top of that, it was a $9,000 delivery fee, but the company was able to schedule us at the same time as another couple building in Ohio. So the delivery driver uh, delivered theirs first and then ours. All of it was on the same truck. So we split that delivery fee. So our half of the delivery fee was $4,500. That's when the gas prices and everything had gone completely out of control. All right, all the diesel surcharges and there was no truck drivers. To yeah, the no job. drivers. There was no drivers, there was no trucking. No, so, so uh, that cost us. A lot of money. The total for that kit, including delivery, was $58,414. And we had to start working on the foundation, which included the site preparation, a bunch of loads of stone, uh, forming and rebar, vapor barrier. Uh, there was a guy that came in with the total station to sort of use uh, his tools to figure out exactly where the house footprint is gonna be. And because we're like, had that weird curve. Right. We had four trucks of concrete come. We had uh, the cure and seal, which is on top of the concrete after they finished smoothing it over. Then he had to come back and put relief cuts for uh, controlled cracks in case there's any cracks and drill holes for all the rebar to go into the concrete for the shell. And that time, there was extra charges for every single truck for diesel again. 
So there was a huge diesel surcharge on every truck that came to our house. Right. So, and, and it wasn't cheap. It was a big, it was actually quite a bit of money. So the total for the whole foundation was $36,806. Yeah, that was way more than we ever expected it to be because the previous year we had done the foundation for the garage. So we figured that this would be just twice as much, but everything went up so much, it was more than twice as much. And that really hurt our budget a lot. So the next thing we did was we started working on the formwork, which began with those steel beams and the boom truck that helped us raise all those beams with family and friends. So the formwork price includes all the, the, the rental of the boom truck, the J-bolts, U-bolts, and all the other hardware. We purchased a lot of epoxy tubes to go into those holes in the slab and epoxy in the rebar. We had to buy sauna tubes to do the chimney. We ended up buying a lot of extra rebar. number five yeah, rebar. Yeah, to beef it up a little bit. Yeah, for that one saggy spot on the roof. Some lath for the inside with the forming of the styrofoam, some tie wire, uh, some roofing felt, and plus we had to pay for some labor. Oh yeah, I can't forget the U.S. steel workers who were amazing and worth every penny. So the total cost for all the form work was $14,950. Which is a little more than we expected to spend. The foundation had taken a lot longer than we expected it to take. So we were weeks behind in getting ready for the shot creek to be done. And that shot creek was scheduled for the first week in August and we just weren't going to be able to get it done on our own. Right, and we made that appointment very far in advance yeah. to get this, to make sure these guys can come that day. Yeah, because they were traveling a long distance. I think they were coming from Boston. Boston. So we kind of had to hire help. And we also had to do a lot of framing before the shot creek could be done. And that's the interior and exterior framing. So we had to frame all the outside walls and then we thought we were kind of done, but then we realized that the outside walls had to be sort of anchored into the interior framing to help hold those parapet walls in place to make sure that they weren't going to move. Right. It's so, sort of all interconnected. And again, we were under the wire and we, we never had framed before. So Rich and I and friends were able to frame all the first floor walls ourselves. But when it came to the second floor walls and doing all the sheathing and the tie deck and doing the flooring on the loft, there was just no way we could do that. We were under the wire again. So we did end up hiring for that. So the framing. So the framing included interior and exterior lumber anchor bolts, nails, and other hardware, Simpson ties, joist hangers, subflooring for the loft, and uh, labor to help us get it all done, including oh, the staircase, yeah. <laughs> which was another $3,400. Yeah, that, and, and that was a way over budget for us because the staircase for the garage, which was two pieces going up, that only cost $800. Then we got the same basic pine staircase for here, which was three pieces with a little landing, and all of a sudden it cost $3,400. So that was very unexpected. Yeah, I don't know, because there was a few angles involved. I guess, I, you know. and it took months to get it, but it was a lot of money. So the total cost for all the framing was $24,016. Again, over budget because we were under the wire and we really needed the help. And we're so thankful that we were able to get that extra help to come in and, and do a lot of the work for us that we would never have gotten done in time for the shot crate. So they came for two days. The first day they came in, they assessed the whole situation, looked at everything we did, uh, suggested some interior bracing, which they did. Uh, then they put their four inch uh, depth gauges around so they could monitor the depth of the concrete when they were spraying it. They came uh, with two certified nozzle operators, a labor crew, man lift rentals, uh, the pumper. Then they slicked the exterior finish. And that total was $35,184. Yeah, which was definitely on budget based on what we had anticipated. 
next thing we're going to talk about is the doors and the windows. We had to order those very early because at that time, you know, post COVID, getting any doors or windows was practically impossible and they're, they were way overpriced. <laughs> so, again, the COVID supply chain issues was in full effect. We did choose to buy Anderson. We have five casement windows, three double hung windows, one giant 12 foot slider, two 36 inch uh, front door and utility room door with little windows in them. Uh, we also had to buy lock sets, zip tape, and caulk for the installation. And um, oh, and labor. I can't forget. We did we, hire guys to help us. Right, yeah, we didn't feel comfortable putting these ridiculously expensive windows and doors in. For a grand total of $12,640. Which for us was definitely over budget. Um, but compared to a lot of other people that build houses, we understand it's really not that bad. <laughs> Painting walls. Yeah, this was a big ouch. The original guy had given us a price right. to do the retaining walls, but there was a big misunderstanding and he didn't realize that they really had to be to plan. Apparently when it's attached to your home, the rules all change. Something about it becoming structural and then engineering report and it was a big deal. So we budgeted for, what was it? $18,000 I think to have all five retaining walls done and then he couldn't do them and he backed out because it was too big a deal and yeah it couldn't be done for that amount of money right there was no way he was gonna get it done for that. so we had to wait a year and the retaining walls did not get done until 2023 and when those guys finally came in they had to do site preparation uh, the footers Three walls, 12 inches thick, 17, up to 17 feet high. Right. Um, well, and we're saying three walls because we couldn't afford to do all five. Right. Uh, plus they did drain openings in the in the pit wall. And then we had another two, two and a half trucks of concrete right. delivered, which is about 27 cubic yards. So for those three retaining walls, our total cost was 35000 two hundred and sixty six dollars and that was tremendously over budget for us based on all our budgeting at the beginning and and what we the impressions that we had been under so that was a mistake on our part and on our concrete guys part when none of us understood it because none of us had done this before that was the retaining walls and that was a big that was a big one. It should be noted that all the rebar in those walls was not included in the kit. That was all part of the cost to buy all that rebar and have it bent. And a lot of it was very heavy rebar, number six yes. and number five rebar. So it was very expensive and a lot of, lot of it. It was a lot. That was a huge part of the expense. And then those walls were huge. The footers were huge. They were 16 inches deep. And then the walls were 12 inches thick by 17 and a half feet high. I mean, it was insane. A lot of work went into those walls. Yeah, that they took months from May to August to finish those walls. Once they did finish, we could get to the waterproofing and the insulation. Now, I just want to point out that the main part of the waterproofing, that membrane, and some of the insulation was part of the kit and also that wicking material right. was all part of the main kit and that price was included in the 58,000. However, because of where we live and our humid climate and our cold climate in the winter, we did have to buy a lot more insulation, thousands and thousands of dollars more of insulation. I can't even believe how expensive that barrier XT rollout foam was. Worth every penny though, and I almost wish we added more, but it is what it is. And then um, because of the climate, we had to do extra when putting the membrane on. So we were the labor, well, mostly right. Rich and Jeff, right. <laughs> for the membrane. So we have a list of things we had to include in this price. So this is what's included in the total. Right, so it involved uh, some drainage pipe and fittings around the perimeter of the, the base of the shell. Uh, two loads of stone, right, to go around with all that drainage. We rented a man lift for 24 days. Yeah, 
Okay, so yeah. we had that for quite a while. And then there was 12 tubes of the Henry's caulk. Yep. 17 and a half rolls of zip tape. So we would put the membrane down and then we would zip tape the top of it because we could only do so much in a day, obviously. It took 24 days. But we would zip tape the top of it and then we would spray it with 42 cans. We bought 42 cans of flexible sealer spray to seal it so that if it rained overnight, which it did many times, right. the clay membrane didn't soak up that water, which would be a huge deal. Right, because it was very important to keep it dry. Right. And there was no way we were covering this whole house <laughs> in one day. No. So. And then uh, you you uh, used a ram set gun. So we went through eight and a half boxes of the green ram set loads. Right. Uh, almost six boxes of one inch ram set nails with the washers, a case of red tape, 12 rolls of the barrier XT foam insulation, five additional sheets of two inch foam insulation, 24 sheets of one inch foam insulation. And we did have to pay for some help with that to get it as done as well. Right. So the total for the waterproofing and insulation was $14,861. Yeah. Which, honestly, if we would have hired people to do that, yeah, I think it would have been... I feel like we did pretty good considering we rented that lift, which wasn't cheap. No. The next step of the process was burial and rock retaining walls for the walls that were not poured. Right. The two south-facing walls. So we had to bury the house. It was a... Uh, it's funny, though, right? Because the engineered retaining walls with the concrete they care about. But nobody cared about the rock walls. Let's go back to the beginning, though, because in 2021, we hired an excavator to lower the entire level of our, our cleared lot by about one and a half to two feet and pile up the dirt way on the back side of the property to save to cover the house. That was probably one of the best things we did right. because it would have cost a fortune to bring in enough. All that fill, yeah. Yeah, we just couldn't have done it. So this cost includes digging up that top layer of dirt to save. And then Steven came in with the... He had like a sifter, which he was able to uh, screen a lot of material. So a lot of the cleaner fill would end up on the top of the dome. And no big rocks would be damaging our foam or the membrane or anything like And he like spent that. days sifting material. Right. Apparently, it's cheaper to sift it in place and get the rocks out than it was to have that brought in. But it was still a lot of money. And then we also needed six loads, full truckloads of sand that we used around the base and, and close to the dome so that it didn't mess with the membrane. Two loads of gravel for the pit. Yep. Uh, some more additional drainage materials for the pit area. And down the two sides. And down the two sides of the parapet walls, right? Um, Clover seed. We bought an 80 pound bag of white Dutch clover. We got a 50 pound bag of winter rye. I think eight bells of straw. Right. 500 square feet of bird netting to lay over the whole roof after it was buried. And our guy, Jim. Jim. So the total for all of that was $27,825. But we were dried in. We were dried in at that point. No more leaks. Very comfortable atmosphere inside the dome. And it was right before the winter, and that's why it was important to throw down some netting and some hay to keep all the seed in place and keep yeah. everything that we did up there in place while it settled. And it was great. And it worked out. Our total cost to just get dried in and buried... 264000 Which... Honestly, considering that we did it during one of the highest inflation times and nothing's gotten better since then, everything has just gotten more and more and more. I'm happy that we got it done when we did because if we were to start this today, I bet you it would be double that. I really do. Which is kind of sad. Oh yeah, that's a lot of money. And it's way more than we anticipated to be dried in. And that's one of the reasons why we're taking it slow to finish up and doing everything we can to... DIY. Do DIY, it yeah. <laughs>
Anything that we can do ourselves, we're doing ourselves. Yeah. 264000 for an unconventional home built of concrete that is probably one of the safest homes you could build. Energy efficient. Don't need air conditioning. Barely any heat, if any, in the winter. Tornado proof. Earthquake proof. And, oh, low maintenance. Low maintenance. That's what it costs to get dried and buried in. I'm Kathy. And I'm Rich. And we're creating a simpler life in the Adirondacks. But simple does not mean easy. And we will see you in the next video. Hopefully, the pantry done and what it costs. <laughs> yeah. When I was going to the shed to get the door for the pantry, I want to show you what I found. You go first. No. <laughs> I'm scared. I don't trust you. <laughs> Look at that. What is that? It's like last year's bee's nest. Oh my gosh. Hornets or something. Honey, that ha that's humongous. Yeah, look at how the bottom fell out of it. Oh my gosh. <laughs>